and I would have a possibility of bruised rib. Oh, you know what? I think that this is actually broken. Oh, okay, well, not gonna use that then. The blade snapped on the smaller bandsaw, which would have been better for the curves, but... Hey there, it is Tom Sir here on the behalf of Indie Structural Productions once again, and episode two of the Great Guitar Build Off Scratch Build video, and the anniversary build. Now, um, it's been a while. <laughs> there was quite a lot of stuff to do in between. As the deadline was further away, I decided to just take my time with this, and it hasn't progressed at all since then. What we're gonna do today is we're gonna go and get some wood, and then we're gonna go and glue up the top, the back, and the body. And tomorrow, we're actually gonna get properly started and dig in to this build, finally, as the <laughs> deadlines are approaching quick. Now, I had a couple of viewers who have commented on videos and I got a lot of really good feedback from the first video. And one of the things that is gonna change is I'm gonna do, the headstock is gonna be a little asymmetrical. That's gonna be down the line when I figure out the shape I want, and the original top I'm gonna go with that I chose, but was a little too narrow. Instead, now I'm just gonna cut two pieces out of it and we'll make it into a full top. You'll see what I mean when we get there. Tomorrow's gonna be fun, but nonetheless, let's head out to um, my favorite place in Helsinki. I'll show you guys what that is. And you'll also kind of see what the trip to the workshop is usually like for me. So, let's get going. So first, a little bit of a walk to the bus stop. Now we're going to the bus for about half an hour, and then it's going to be another half an hour or so to the bridge. Then a little bit more walking, and uh, this bag is going to get, get a bit heavier with the uh, wood. I'm going to be buying mahogany for the body, but I'm also going to get some ash for another um, upcoming build while I'm at it. And here we are, Plektra Trading. So right in the heart of Helsinki, the promised land of all things woodworking. They have everything. I mean everything. But for me, what I'm most interested in is the wood store. Yeah, I'm gonna have fun today. Look what I found. There's two pieces of mahogany that are absolutely perfect. And now with a considerably heavier bag, we're off to the races, as it were. I'm going to the workshop now. So it's gonna be another half an hour or so by bus. I found everything I needed and we're good to go. And off the bus. Uh, fortunately, it's not a very long walk. Bag is heavy, it's raining, and I might have a possible a bruised rib, so. so it kind of hurts to carry this much weight. But we'll get there. And it's funny, listening to Ibaraki now, wearing an Ibaraki t-shirt. Check out Ibaraki for some awesome black metal. Now, because I don't have my own workshop, I use Walker Versus for all my bigger machining needs. So, I get here. First thing I do is get what I need from my shelf of garbage. Um, well, not garbage, but just a little bit of a hoarding issue. But hey, I'm gonna put on my Savage Industries apron, dig up some maple for the neck, and then we'll get to processing stuff down for gluing. And that's gonna be today's job. All right, now that we're done with the bad quality audio, 
I have this flamed maple that I'm going to be using for the neck. There should be way more than enough of this. It's not currently thicknessed on both sides. Oh, it's plain flat on both sides, but not thicknessed here. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to joint up the back, uh, the top and the back. And then there's some maple if I need some. Uh, I'm going to join the ash body for another build, but I'm going to join the mahogany as well so we can get that glued up. Now, as this jointer has some issues, I'm going to test on the more than wide enough backboards. is any point. I'm gonna have to use bench dogs, which is fine. 
And then this lovely, lovely, was this number seven, I believe? <sighs> yep, number seven. Just to get a nicer finish on there. I think that's quite a bit. Let's try that. There's a ever so slight amount of tear up, but it's because I'm going against the grain like a dumbass. Nope, that was a bad one. I believe that bit is pretty good to be able to compare a bit better. I'll need to do this one. Ever so slight bit of wiggle back and forth, but the main idea is that if you can't press the joint together with your fingers, then it's not a good enough joint. You shouldn't need that much clamping pressure for something like this. Tops even more so, because those are just gonna be fine with just masking tape. I'm not gonna be able to do the next today because it took way too long for me to actually, well, get them done. So, thing there. Um, I doubt I'm gonna be able to hold this in the bench dogs. I'll try. Not a massive amount of pressure because I don't want it bending. And then very lightly. Oh, that's not stable like at all. What am I gonna do? Could do the belt sander. I'll try how I'll I'll try how the belt sander works. That worked out better than expected. So that's exactly what. I've done try dry fit for the clamping, which is always a good idea to do. And now we're just gonna apply the glue. Because everything looked pretty good there. Make sure there's no little pieces of debris or anything like that in between. Just enough glue there. Nah, I'll pick that up in a minute. What I like to do is also rub the joint together. This helps with slippage. So. That could have gone better. Now, I would put two blocks in between there just so I wouldn't get any clamp marks. But considering that there's so much wood to work with here, I'm not too fussy about that right now. Good bit of splurge. I'm gonna add small clamps to the end. Just to even those out a little bit. Yep, that's good. All right, just making sure that I have even tightness all, all around because the shirt works off. Just putting a mark that it is mine and when you can declamp. Right, let's have a look at the top and back. All right, I got the body, I got the body glued up, um, but because I'm pretty much running out of time, I'm gonna join the top and the back at home, carry them here tomorrow. All right, I'm gonna clean things up and then head back home and I'll be back here tomorrow 
with some filming help actually from my good friend Ionic Gecko um, that you might know from the longboard video. So, see you tomorrow. Now to join up these, I'm just gonna need some masking tape. But first, I wanna do something to enhance that joint. Yes, it's early in the morning, that's why I'm talking kind of quietly so I don't wake my girlfriend up. masking tape and pulling the pieces together. Now there's a reason why I haven't put glue yet. You'll see very soon. Flip this around and prepare the glue. And now we have the tape on one side holding everything together so that's possibly just a little too much glue. Let's see. Then we'll fold it back together. There. Now to reapply pressure on this side. even splurge or splurge of glue all over which means uh, it's taking to a good joint but we could already see that before I'm doing these early earlier now because I need both the top and the back for the workshop today I'm gonna go gonna be going to the workshop around noon these should cure up nicely I'm still gonna leave on the tape during you know travel time but remove the tape once we get to the workshop there the back is now done and I'll do the same with the top leave those to cure and then go pack up for the workshop day two of wood processing list of things to do today Get the body, get that to the right shape, rough cut the top and the back, get those to the right thickness, cut out the laminates for the neck, and possibly route cavities in the body. But we'll have a look at that if we get. I think that's about it for what needs to be done today. Should be a good day. Got off the bus now and almost at the workshop. Now, looking at the time it took me to travel from my front door to the workshop, it's about an hour and 20 minutes or so. Oh, so that's annoying. But yeah, gonna get straight to work. Okay, so I'm getting some. And I think that is my cameraman. So if I have 460. Maybe I want to make sure that I actually fit this entire thing here. So to minimize waste, that will be the best way to do this, probably. The thing is there's a reason I don't do angled headstocks that much because I end up wasting so much wood. Good protractor is always the way to go. <clears throat> All right, so this. Let's see if I can get 180 out of that. Not quite. Okay, so I need to move it back. Can I get that? Yeah, I got plenty of room. I'm trying to get the measurement for the first one right, then we can just copy the other ones. So that's my knot line. I need this to be 21. 
So hold on, with the fretboard, 21. So without the fretboard, that's 15. All right, well, we'll do 20. So I can have stuff to take down for making the volume. Headstock's gonna be 15, but we're gonna make it 20 for now. Great, all right. Let's go cut that out and then mark everything else. Now I'm not going to cut straight to the line, but I want to have a little bit of excess for gluing. Do the other ones. I'm gonna flip the direction just because I want to get a little bit more stability out of the neck and this time I can actually cut to the line. One, two, and then we can flip the other one around again. I'm trying to cut this pretty much as close to the line as possible this time. Just so that I don't have too many different sized pieces. So, um, because this isn't one of my shapes, I don't have a template for it. Nor am I gonna bother to make a template for it because I'm not gonna make any more of these because Gibson will probably sue me. So I'm gonna cut out the design that I've already made previously on the sketch paper. And then I'm just gonna transfer the lines over to the mahogany. And then we're gonna actually Shape the mahogany for the most part. Well, actually, no. Hold on. We need to shape the mahogany to the final shape so that we can <laughs> thickness the tops or cut out the tops, thickness them, and then once those are thickness, we can actually thickness the body because then we'll know what we need. So, yeah, a lot of processes back to back that kind of I would do differently usually, but custom guitars and all that jazz. All right. I'm not going to poke myself. Where's the holster for this? Not there. Nope. There. And like I've mentioned already before, um, earlier, probably, I can't remember what, today, yesterday, someday, uh, that behind the camera, my good friend, Ayana Gecko, that I. you might recognize from the uh, longboard video that went up a little while back. Hello. He's helping me film and make things look better <laughs> than my uh, faffing about usually. All right, so I'm gonna line up the center lines here. Oh, yep, there. Make sure that it's nice and tight. And there, great. Great. 
All right, let's go chop some stuff up. Oh, okay, well, not gonna use that then. That is a bummer. The blade snapped on the smaller bandsaw, which would have been better for the curves, but I don't have time to put a new blade on that. So we'll just do this rough and dirty. <clears throat> Now we're trying to get all the way to the line. And I'm not pushing almost at all on the belt here because I don't want it to take it off too much. Just note, it's safer for you to be on that side because if something moves, it moves that way. Shop safety, kids, 101. If you're in the line of fire, move out from the line of fire. Trust me, I've learned that the hard way. Because when you get to the end grain here, that's a nasty habit of happening. Especially when you start turning it to the other side. Which again, very important that you don't apply too much pressure on there's a little bit of a bump there. I'm going to try and get that out. That's pretty good. Turn that off. Uh, red button, yeah. What we're going to do is we're going to switch to the belt sander on this Triton. Don't like switching from the spindle. It's really quick. Let's take that off. Put this in. Like so. There we go. And there's a very irritating thing about my spindle sander specifically is that it jumps. But I've been told that it just sometimes does. It's kind of annoying, but. We'll get through it.
Bless you. We're going to need to figure out how to fix that. Um, I've tried. I got some guidance from the people who I bought this from, but it still does that. So Triton, if you're watching, I'd love a new spindle sander. All right. Oh. Putting the spindle itself back on. All right. All right, and uh, yeah, we're good to go. Thickness. In order to get the accurate thickness for the body, we need to thickness the top and the back. In order to get accurate thickness for the top and the back, I need to cut them down ever so slightly. Let's see would be about that. Oh, okay, well that's sweet. I can just about almost fit this on here, but I was prepared to glue on wings anyway, so I'll have to do that on one side. That's not a big deal. Well, because I have a top and a back, I really need to make sure that I'm drawing these on here the right way around. Yes, that is the right way around, yes. Yes, okay, <laughs> had to make sure. Right, let's cut these out and then go and thickness sand. is poor. <laughs> uh, we are aiming for 42. What is so 27. We want to be 10, 27 on that. Really? That much? So we have how much material to take away from here? About 20 mil. God, that sucks. Because that's a lot to send away. Yeah. All right. That's what we're going to do. Yeah, the issue is that there's so much material to kind of like remove that there's no point in sanding it because it's just going to take forever and I don't really have time for that. <laughs> Looks like it is probably in the best nick.
So what we've ended up with now without the thickener, we have 49 mil. We want that to be, which is a lot. Like let's say the Strat is a 45. This, this is a thick boy, but I'm gonna probably thickness this down a lot more. So ran out of battery on the proper camera. So you're stuck with crap audio. <laughs> That's what you get for getting a cameraman to do good filming for <laughs> once. Um, yeah, I need more memory cards with me. Anywho, um, I'm gonna thickness the rest of this later on, because let's face it, I'm still on vacation, and today was gonna be raining, but it's actually pretty nice weather outside, so I'm gonna go enjoy the weather. Um, thanks for watching. We're gonna pick this up at some point, somewhere. Maybe do an outro again at home. I have no idea. But thanks for watching so far, and thanks to Ayana Gecko. Mr. Ayana Gecko, Mr. Al, Mr. Al. <laughs> <laughs> Probably never called you that. Yeah. Um, no. For helping with filming. No let, problem, man. I let, 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 let's pack up and head home. Let's get out of here. <laughs>